Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. When a string vibrates to produce sound, the most important wave is the wave produced along the entire length of the string. This wave is called the fundamental. The string when plucked also has other waves occurring at the same time. The frequencies of these waves occur as integer multiples, and so the period for each is a reciprocal of its frequency. All of these waves occur at the same time on the string. If we look graphically at a combination of all of the vibration patterns, we begin to see how all of the waves combine to form an overall sound. Uh, different multiples of the various frequencies called overtones all hit our ear as an overall combination of waves that gives the string or really any variety of instrument its unique quality like you see here. And we are here in this video to talk to you about the mathematics of the harmonic series. So the harmonic series as an infinite sum, the idea of the formula being 1 over n explicitly summing from 1 to infinity. So if we start plugging in at 1, obviously we get the first term is 1. And then if we plug in 2, we get that the next term is a half. And then of course we get a third. And we keep getting reciprocals of the positive integers. If we're doing an infinite sum, and then of course it's an infinite series. If you think about the terms 1 over n and what those terms do, they get smaller and smaller, very similar to what a geometric series does when it converges. But the overall behavior of the harmonic series is a bit different than geometric series where the terms are getting smaller. The overall harmonic series actually diverges. We're going to take a look at why this happens, assuming that you haven't learned many of the tests for convergence or divergence yet. If we look at this infinite list of terms, we want to think about grouping the terms, and we're going to group according to powers of 2 in the denominator. So I'm going to sort of single out some terms here. These are all powers of 2, 1, 2, 4, 8. The next one would be 1 over 16 as a term that has a power of 2 on the bottom. And so what we'll do is we'll regroup the terms so that each of those terms is at the end of one of our groups. If I look at this and I compare each of the end terms, so you notice in the first two groups I really only have one term. So any group that has more than one term, I look at the last term of each of those groups. And I think about what would happen if I changed everything in that group to have the same denominator. So what if everything in this group had a denominator of 4 and everything in this group had a denominator of 8. So if we make that change, then we end up with a couple of one-fourths and some one-eighths and then a bunch of one over sixteens and then we'd have a bunch of one over thirty-twos. And so what has changed as we move from here to here? Has my sum here gotten larger or smaller making this change? And if you maybe look at the one-fifth through one-eighth group here, the one-fifth, the one-sixth, and the one-seventh have all changed to one-eighth. Are those bigger or smaller? Well, 1 8 is the smallest term in this group, so all of these have become smaller than they were before. So that means if I look at all of the partial sums of this second series that I've created based on this one, all of the partial sums down here will be less than the top one. So the list of partial series from the original is going to be at least as much as the new one that I've created. If we start to look at this bottom series to try and analyze what's going on, so if I look at each of these, we'll notice obviously we have two terms and then four terms, and then this would be eight terms from 1 9th to 1 16th, all turned into 1 16th. So you can see the number of terms after the first two, the number of terms in each group is doubling each time. Well, two 1 4ths and four 1 8ths and eight 1 16ths, those are all going to add to a very particular number, right? So we start with one, we have a half, then I have have two one-fourths, that's going to give me two-fourths, which is a half. Now I have four one-eighths, four-eighths is also one-half. The next eight terms are going to give me an additional one-half. Then the next 16 terms would give me a half, the next 32 terms would give me a half, etc. Since we have an infinite number of terms to use, we can keep adding one-half forever. So what is it going to look like if I have 1 plus a half continually and I add 1 half forever? Well, it may not happen very quickly, but what's happening is if I'm adding a half forever, then we're going to eventually add up to some larger and larger number that approaches infinity. So this will diverge. Now if my second series diverges, and I know the list of sums for this one is at least as much as this one, then this one also has to diverge, because this adds up to some infinite value if we take all of the terms forever. So this one's at least as much as that. It must also add up to some infinite value. So one thing we really want 
want to keep in mind as we start doing work with both sequences and series in calculus is that the series, if we add up the harmonic series, that's going to diverge. We get an infinite amount based on what we just saw. Um, but the actual terms, what we call the sequence, right, which is just the list of terms, that actually converges to zero, the limit of 1 over n. In other words, where do the terms eventually tend toward, that converges to zero. But the sum, if we add up all of the terms, diverges. So hopefully the harmonic series is one way that you can keep clear in your mind the difference between sequence and series, um, thinking about the limit of terms versus the sum of all of those terms. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.